Okay, everybody, and let's get ourselves going here on Facebook. There we go. And uh, this meeting is being uh, live streamed. Thank you very much to the people over at Zoom for letting us know that. Hello, and welcome to our Monday pop-up. This is a little show we do once a week, and it's just a bunch of nice people getting together, having a decent time with each other. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. I drink my coffee to try and keep myself awake. Mm -hmm. mm. We got about six people waiting, so let's uh, admit them all. Okay, here they here they come. Wait a minute. Hold on. There we go. Wanted to know that I was pushing the right buttons. Hello to uh, Mr. Andrew Deutsch. And Mike Chisholm is there. And Charlie Wallace is there. And Len LaFrisco is about to pop in. There he is. And uh, finally, right now, the lovely and attractive Edward Berger. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Here comes Mandy. Uh, she's joining in. And Scott Boddicker is joining in today. Uh, see, so, you know, all these people, we get a nice bunch here. Uh, hi, Mandy. How are you? Good. How are y'all? Yeah. Hi, y'all. Y'all fine. Uh, <laughs> you know, that is the most, I'll tell you that term y'all is a great term <laughs> because it it's is hard. all in, it's all encompassing, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a short name. I, I always like y'all and the thing that Southerners created was something that Gloria Steinem would like to kind of take credit for, but not really. Uh, the Southerners were calling women Ms. years before she ever came up with it. And I asked somebody once, why do you, when I lived in Texas, why do you use the term Ms.? And they say, because you don't know whether you're married or not. And so that is all encompassing. See, so... Yep. So what is what is all y'all then? That's what I that like. Over. I like all y'all. That's a good. Oh, all y'all. All y'all is really means a bunch of you. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of you. A group of y'alls is y all, all y'all. Yeah. Uh, Paul Eleven is joining us today, as is Charlene Solis, as is there she is, the old gray-haired wife of mine, <laughs> Marjorie <laughs> Miller, and uh, I welcome you, Scott. Maybe down there in Texas, you know, y'all down there in Texas, y'all, y'all, right? You guys, you guys. Yeah. But here in New York, it's use guys, use guys. guys. <laughs> you guys. all use, you know. Anyway, how y'all doing? <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you later then. <laughs> Check in and see how you are. Uh, 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 by the way, what was it? But there was something I wanted to mention that I forgot completely about now. So I'll, I'll remember it in a while. I should. It's getting to point in my life where I got to start writing things down. I should write yes. it down, and then I don't. I go on the air and I said, I know I wanted to talk about something that had nothing to do with politics, but had to do with something culturally, and then I can't remember what it was. But anyway, how many are? Here are happy that the writers, uh, the uh, actors' strike is over. Oh, I am. How many of you are actors? <laughs> well, okay, so I guess technically, I've been in a background in a bunch of stuff. So yeah, I've done a couple movies. So yeah, yeah. all right. But you've been not... in a couple. You've been in a couple oh, wow. movies, Len. What movie? Yeah. Well, I, I think I told you years ago. Um, it's called Death Blood Four. It's available on Amazon Prime, and it's. <laughs> It's, it's something you should go watch one night and then tell me what you think. Death Blood 4. Yes, and there is no 1, 2, or 3. That's part of the joke. <laughs> oh, really? That they, it was a, 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 it's a... It's a send-up. A, a of, send of, of a, okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not funny, but it's, you know, it's a campy, you know, schlocky movie that uh, it's very funny. It's good. Yeah, well, that's probably a lot of what we're going to see now that the strike is over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we can get back to making all those bad movies and those bad TV shows that we've been forced to watch all these years. Right. I couldn't mm -hmm. wait for it to get over so I could get back to not acting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, it is SAG after, after all, after all, after all. Hmm. But the after part didn't go on strike. 
Otherwise, you wouldn't have seen all those people on MSNBC and so on and yeah. so forth, because that's the after side. And I wonder when we're going on strike. <laughs> there are a lot of things to strike over. I mean, is, shouldn't we be able to strike over AI as well? After, yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah. I mean, they, they could, for instance, they could take Howard Stern and and, and uh, Sirius XM wouldn't have to pay him anymore. They could just do an AI version of, uh, of uh, Howard Stern. And I don't think anybody would notice the difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I wanted to say to uh, our good friend up in Canada. Hello, sir. Husband, yeah. Uh, explain poutine to everybody. Poutine is uh, um, French fries with cheese curds and hot gravy. And then there are oh. many, many, many variations of it. But the original oh. is is the idea of French fries, oh. cheese curds, and hot gravy together. With hot gravy together. Poutine. Yes. Oh. You, want the, you want the cheese curds melting over the fries. Yes. Cheese curds. That's right, the squeaky cheese. Uh, but when when the squeaky hot gravy, squeaky cheese. Yes. Well, you people cheese. in Canada are weird. I think that's a dairy thing. I don't think it's exclusively a Canadian thing. I think you go to any dairy in Wisconsin or California or whatever or Texas, you'll 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 find the squeaky cheese. I well, believe. this oh, yeah. week, uh, um, 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 John Oliver mentioned poutine. In Did he to Canada? Yeah, it's on my DVR. Okay, I can't wait to go watch it. It's a very good show, by the way um you very know. good food by the way yeah, yeah no yeah. but it it, uh, it it was a very good show this week he, he pretty well i i don't want to get political or anything like that but he pretty well explained the history and everything of what's going on in israel and gaza what does that have to do with poutine yeah. <laughs> somewhere i guess after that part of it was over you know they went to something, and then they the birds, mentioned, mentioned the birds, he, Alex? what in reference to the bird that he's trying to Okay, get but it's unrelated to Israel and Palestine, right? Because I don't want no, to get into no, a Poutine no. political war here. <laughs> <laughs> the entire no, conflict no. is because of Poutine. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but he does a very good show about it. Something it's not kosher. Probably the best I've seen in trying oh, wow. to at least explain to people what's been going on and where things are going wrong and so on. And uh, uh, it, it really, really, really good. I don't think anybody can be upset by anything he said, but he also took a stand pretty much on yeah. various things. So it's a good show. But anyway, but he mentioned poutine, I think in reference to the bird, but I have no idea. But he all of a sudden, out of the, he said, and up in Canada, they just all they care about is poutine or something like yeah. that. <laughs> you know. is that you take it pretty seriously. Is that a French word, poutine? Um, I know. Okay. So my brother lives in Montreal, but he is not, um, a Francophone. It is definitely got, uh, like Quebec, I believe is where poutine was, uh, was originated or at least made famous. So yeah, I'm certain that it is, but I am also not a Francophone. So I can't, I can't accurately relate, but it is definitely, uh, given the French accent on it. Poutine definitely has the French accent. You know what's interesting so. is also the way in which you, and you're, quite correct in doing it and i do it correctly to honor you fine folks up in canada but why i have no idea well we appreciate uh, it nonetheless yeah uh uh in that i always uh, call it montreal not montreal but montreal yep. montreal um, that's right and you just said quebec quebec, quebec. that's right quebec. Mm -hmm. so everybody if you want to honor canada you will pronounce those names correctly of course, we don't Excellent. want Hunter Canada. It's okay by me. You know. <laughs> We're fine with it too. We'll like you nonetheless. Yes, right, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been following the Canadian Football League playoffs. Uh, is there a reason? So you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you this, miss football? Canadian that? football is exciting. Well, wait is. Do you miss football that much? <laughs> it's got a bigger field they only have three downs so there's a lot more offense bigger balls as well we love yep. to admit we love to promote that that we have bigger balls up here as well 
but it's not it's not a normal football it's not a um obloid uh, steroid or whatever they call yeah, it but this is bigger it's a bit it's a bit fatter and it's a bit uh i wouldn't say that it's 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 in between a an american football and a rugby ball but it's it's definitely a little bit bigger than an american football yes why can't you just be like us I ask myself that question every day. It keeps me up at night, Alex. <laughs> okay. okay. You specifically, in fact, why can't I be more like American Alex Bennett? That's well, what I know people try to do that. Um, <laughs> and they can have no career. Anyway, um, uh, what else? There was one of the poutine. That was one thing I wanted to bring up. And then there was some other little item uh, because the TV shows are coming back. Mm hmm. Uh, they will, uh, CBS has just announced as of uh, January 12th, they will be doing a short season. In other words, a show like Young Sheldon, uh, which is uh, being, the name is being changed to Not So Young Sheldon. Um, it's got to be 18 by now. <laughs> because this kid's voice has got to be changing this yeah. season, I'm sure. Um, you know, it's boys go through a bigger change that way than girls do. Because do women's voices change once they go? They don't. Do women go through puberty? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I'm, what do you I'm just wondering. Yeah. Uh, what I'm you, uh, it was known as pu puberty or mom, I just got a period. <clears throat> you know, I mean, do, do your voices change <laughs> much? Yeah. I, I, I love the questions do women go through puberty. That was a winner. <laughs> I have very fond memories of the girls in my class. <laughs> going through puberty, right? <laughs> I was just wondering if in women it was called puberty. Well, puberty for both, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how left out I am. Okay. Puberty. What would you call it otherwise? A blossoming? Well, what do they call puberty up in Canada? Jeans? I think it's I, I think it's still called puberty. Yeah. Oh my God, you stole something from us. <laughs> Being uh, released from the penalty box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, I noticed it, uh, uh, that that uh, um, uh, Mandy seems to be more dressed today than usual. It's her new hairdo. It, it kind of looks like you're wearing a female version of a suit there, but I guess not. It's just a sweater with, you know, like. Oh, a shirt. I see. Okay, all right. Oh. Okay, okay. Now, 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 you look casual but, again. But it kind of looked like you, just the top part of it, like you were wearing a jacket of some sort, and oh. you know, like you were going to a funeral. Okay. What? The boss was in today. Got to look professional. Uh, oh, uh, um, no, we had our potluck today for Thanksgiving. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Potluck for Thanksgiving. It isn't Thanksgiving yet. No, but we had our potluck today just because on mo next Monday, a lot like a lot of people will go ahead and go on vacation and stuff. Yep. Today, everybody's in the office. So. You know, if you move it back any further, you're going to bump into Canada's. <laughs> did, did you bring the poutine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people take the whole week off next week. I'm only working Monday. Is the, uh, next week is is Thanksgiving. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, that's that's cool. I, almost, I almost forgot. God. You yeah. three days off and you get nine days in a row. So Hell, yeah, I, I'm only, I'll only do two shows that week. I'll do this one and I'll do one on Wednesday and that's it. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll see you later. <laughs> isn't Thanksgiving when we celebrate when turkeys go into puberty? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, actually, what happened was is there's a, a Jewish version of Thanksgiving. Oh, no. We, we, cel we, <laughs> we celebrate the fact that we were going to have uh, a turkey for every one of eight days, and we only had enough for one day. <laughs> Somehow we made it last eight days. <laughs> That's a really Jewish joke. I'm not going to pull that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not a Jewish joke. <laughs> How many here are Jewish? <laughs> That'll admit it these days. Mm. <laughs> it's a that's a dangerous thing. Oh boy, yeah, it sure. Is. All of us may have some Jew in us. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I'm, just, I'm. I'm. Just, you, you may have some Jew in you. 
I mean, good. I don't want to go near that joke, okay? I'm not even going near that joke about having a Jew in you. Uh, Great pickup line. <laughs> you got some Jew in you? Would you like some? Do you want a little Jew in you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just glad that Sorry, we're in uh, Harlem because there's no way the anti Semites are coming up here. <laughs> <laughs> you hear in Cleveland some jackasses de defaced one of those Jewish cemeteries last night. Uh, Spray painted swastikas on the Jewish graves at a cemetery. Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's disgusting. I mean, it's disgusting also what they're doing to some uh, uh, Palestinian people in this country. Say, you know. Uh, see a woman wearing a hijab and she's yelled at and screamed at and so on. I guess America has always indulged in racism and anti-Semitism, as we've mentioned. And I just think that this is like giving them free act, a free reign to go do what they do best, which is be racist. You know? Especially with 45 referring to people as vermin these days. Ugh. Yeah. What did he really? What did he? Yes. Who did he refer to as vermin? Anyone who doesn't support him. Yeah, anybody who doesn't support him. Yeah. Is vermin? Yeah. He's going to eradicate the vermin. Eradicate the vermin. That's what he said. Just yeah. like our friend Adolf. Sounds like a speech yeah. translated from German. I read a while back. There was a uh, there was a uh, Nazi propaganda film that was made once using rats. There were many yeah. as being as being Jews, yeah. And so when I heard that term "vermin" from Trump, from you guys, all I could envision was that piece of propaganda. Exactly. Yeah. But I don't uh, know if you've heard, but that Trump guy is just not really a good person. He's not a good person. No, <laughs> he's not a nice guy. At least that's what that's what people say. Yeah, I hear people say that. The, the, and he, 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 the second part of his trial is on now. Do you yeah. think they're going to try and go for a mistrial? Of course. Of course. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Will they succeed? No. Not with my judge. <laughs> <laughs> that guy doesn't yeah. let anybody get away with anything. You know, they were saying today, and we don't want to get, we're not getting political with this. This is just strategic. The, uh, he, he has allowed the defense to get up and get, put in any information they want to put in without questioning it. And a lot of people say, well, why? And the reason why is he doesn't want to give them a reason for a mistrial. You know, so he's just given them a free reign, you know, in that respect. And since he's the only judge in the matter, he knows how it's going to turn out. Yeah. Yeah. So, whatever. Well, they've already been found guilty. The question is how much. Yeah. Yeah. Or they even pronounce guilty. Um, you know, the judge made the decision because the judge could, well, what it was was a summary judgment, which a judge can do before a trial if he's presented with all the information and he can make a decision, he makes a summary judgment. And that's what he did. So. Well, also the 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 the, the, uh, the lawyers on the defense side uh, said that they uh, uh, did not want a jury trial; that they would uh, um, live with just a judge. Well, they forgot to. Yeah. What yeah. happened? They forgot to file for a jury. Really? Trial. Check yeah. that little box that said you want a little jury box trial. that says we want a jury trial, and they didn't check it. No. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, two, there's two stories of that. that those That's types of trials don't necessarily I get imagine. juries, even if they ask for them. What's that? They didn't ask. Supposedly in New York, that type of a trial doesn't necessarily get a jury, but you do have to ask for it to get one. So even if they had asked, they might not have gotten one because of summary judgment. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, anyway, so so uh, we're ha we're having lots of fun with Trump these days, you know, it's good. Uh, but uh, he also he appeared. Uh, oh, this was I think this was one of the things I wanted to mention. And again, this is political; it's just indicative of something. Uh, he went to a, an event in Madison Square Garden. Trump 
along with Tucker Carlson, Jesus. his son, Don Jr., Kid Rock. Is he Beavis or Butthead? Yeah, and one other person. <laughs> and the entire place went crazy, shouting, you know, uh, USA, USA, you know. And oh, it's just crazy. Now, let me ask you, just, just as a point of just having fun here as a little contest. Has, did anybody hear about this thing? Nope. No. no. Okay. So it's did, all fair. You missed one. What part do you of think the event was? It was a fight. A boxing. It wasn't a, and, and it wasn't a Ranger gonna, game, was it? If, you're not going to win if you say Nazi rally. What? A boxing what? match. A boxing what kind of, match. What? what? No, you're the, you the, know, the ultimate fighting champion. That's Something right. Uh, yeah. UFC. MMA, yeah. Did you oh, see though? Yeah. Bill Burr's wife flipped him the bird twice. Yes, yeah. Two, a double flip, a double <laughs> yeah. flip. Okay, yeah. Who did that? Bill, Bill Burr's Burr, wife, uh, comedian. comedian, his wife. Wow, gave because, her gave her the double hand. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if I would have had the guts to do that in that place, was, not with all those this. people cheering. Yeah, but, you know. It's 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 getting it's getting it's getting it scares me, it scares me. But you know, sure. I've got anywhere from one to twenty years to live. So I, I you know I could I don't know if I'm going to have to live through the what's going on now. But a lot of you are, and Speaking a lot of, of kids this, growing up today are going to have to live with it. Did uh, you see Trump's sister was found dead this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that. Wow. Yeah, she's eighty six, I believe. She yeah. was a judge. And uh, she was she... a judge, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and... and and a pretty good lady, from what from what I. Oh, can so she was very critical of him. Mm -hmm. uh, she was protective of him because you know, older sister, big sister, but she uh, did not defend any of what he was doing. She he was she was a big critic. Yeah. She had his number. Do you oh, know she was a judge? Yeah. yeah, yeah, federal. Who wasn't appointed by Trump? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she died today. She was, but she was eighty-six. You know, and it's understandable. You know, not not terrible. Um, Marjorie, what's new? Anything with us? Nothing much. What's for dinner? <laughs> You're not supposed to ask that until the end of the hour. It's a surprise. <laughs> It's a surprise. It's a surprise. leftovers. Yeah, it's a little, a surprise. Our leftovers a surprise. Yes. <laughs> I, I made ribs last night. Ooh. Well, I, come on, Marjorie. They were good. Okay, thank you. They were probably one what's of the your, What's your secret, Alex? Um. Um. Well, I mean. There is, you know, there is no secret. There's a very simple recipe, but the secret is you bought the right ribs. You know, I've gone to the same store, bought the same ribs, you know, baby backs, and they've been not very good. Other times I buy them, they're incredible. It's all dependent on the meat. It's not dependent on the guy who cooks them. I mean, I have a whole process. I, I take, it takes me about three hours a little over three hours to cook them do you boil then bake no okay in the I, old days you used to i uh, used to and that is a oops, bad way i gotta to go do guys it. what i gotta go i might be oh. back <laughs> you, right, really? you might you might be back hope he's good looking I might be back, yeah. <laughs> oh, back. okay, <laughs> okay. It, it's leaving us uh, we're losing our Darla here. Yeah. Okay. So you got, you got, bye. <laughs> she frozen now? Oh, she's, she's gone. gone. Oh, okay. You were talking yeah. about ribs, Alex. No, oh, she's still there. Uh, no, uh, ribs are, uh, uh, I, 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 I slow, I slow bake them. Uh, I used to boil them. I heard that was a good idea. What that does is it makes the meat so it falls off the bone. But it also parboils the meat, which is not it dry, it gets rid of a lot of the fat and the taste out of it. Ooh. So what you do is you just I just uh, cook them for uh, 
about three hours, uh, very slow cooking, and then, uh, you know, put a little little sauce on them, cook them for about another half hour, bake the sauce in. And uh, then I, I also, at the very end, I turn on the broiler and get a char on the top of the ribs. Okay. Yeah. That's well, my way of doing it, but it's a very simple, simple. Uh, and and they're the first, good. They're the, really but good. But the first half of cooking, I do in foil. Mine's even simpler. I just call up Rudy's Steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best recipe. <laughs> How that mine are better than Rudy's? What Probably. do you think? What do you think, Mandy? You're a Southerner. What's that about? About how to do ribs? Uh. I guess you cook them on the oven for a long time, and then you throw them. You slap them on the grill. Well, then you throw them on the grill if you have a grill. Yeah, that's what I do. If you don't have a grill, uh, just you just the oven. yeah. But I mean, they're they're fine. They come my mind come out just fine, you know. So is it straight up? And I'm not. I'm being actually dead serious as I say this. Is it a Canadian thing where we put the barbecue sauce and the maple syrup on? Is that just a Canadian thing, or do they yeah. do that down south? Too? No, we put the, we put the barbecue sauce on them. No, the maple syrup as well, though. Uh, well, and I don't use maple syrup. Uh, I could imagine that would work. It's pretty Fair incredible. Sauce. Yeah, sauce is with it. Huh? You can ah, make yeah, the yeah. sauce with maple syrup as your sweetener. It's not gotcha. just some, some 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 barbecue sauces have maple syrup in them. Yeah. 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 My wife, my wife does that. That's one of the secrets to her. I mean, she has, she does amazing ribs and you pull the back strap off the ribs before you cook them. Mm. Uh, half the time. Pull the what? Back strap. There's a oh membrane God. on the, on the bone side of the yep. ribs. And if you pull it off, <laughs> the ribs cook better. Yep. The back strap. It's called molasses. Back strap. Molasses. Ah. No, not, no, not that. Like the 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 oh, you're talking like about membrane. the molasses. No. Mm. No, that's it's like the, the ribs, that's Alex. Black strap, not back. B a c k. On the back of the ribs, there's a white membrane that goes across all the bones that you peel yeah. off the ribs, and it makes them more tender when it cooks. Ah, oh. Oh. it's a it's a unnecessary. I think I probably don't have to do that because these are baby backs, and I think they've already been cut that way. It's possible. I always because I was told there's no such thing as baby back ribs. Yeah, they're just St. Louis cut. They're, no, the, no, they're not St. Louis cuts, but they're it's the way in which it's cut off yeah. and prepared by the butcher. Yeah. Um, May I please do a callback? Sure. Don Giller just messaged me poutine, P O O T E E N, a fifteen <laughs> a fifteen year old with diarrhea. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, if you're out there, Geller, why aren't you calling? <laughs> He didn't have the courage to, to come in and say it. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Don Gilman. Give me a <laughs> That's a terrible joke. Oh, it's speaking not. of Don Giller, uh, and a, another callback. I just watched um, the Albert Brooks documentary comes out this week. I don't know it's, if you guys knew that on HBO. Good. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it. It hasn't, it hasn't been arrived in HBO Canada yet. But I, in anticipation, I watched his compilation of Albert Brooks on Letterman, and it goes all the way from 82 all the way up to, I think, 2012 was the last appearance. Yeah. And the very last thing that Brooks and Letterman talk about is Trump. And uh, it's very interesting listening to them talk about him. This is well before he yeah. announced and whatnot in 2012, and it's pretty interesting listening to them talk about him. Yeah, well, it, 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 it's a very good documentary. If oh, I can't wait to see it. Seen. That's excellent. Yeah. It's, a, it's excellent. What you don't get it up there till what? You're I think third. I think it's on the it's it's on the DVR. I might have missed it, uh, but I know it, they're repeating it at least again on HBO on Thursday night. So I'm I've got it ready to record. I think this it's Thursday. In, he got caught in customs. He didn't have TSA pre. Oh, that's well, probably what it was. I'll tell you, you don't you you do, you don't have um, a Max. Our version of it is just yeah. I get everything that Max does, but some of it is a week or two after the fact no but wait a minute you see there there's two types of hbo okay there's the yeah. hbo that's on max yes there's the hbo that's on cable yes you're talking about the hbo on cable no i get both because we have we have something up here in called canada called crave and crave has on demand hbo and showtime and vice and something else all at once but 
it doesn't hit the on demand for usually about a week after. Oh, really? Yeah. So, but the cable is usually the exact same. So I might have missed it yesterday. They're probably waiting for your Thanksgiving. Most likely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then the mother load hits. And then the mother load hits. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's very good. It's it's an excellent. Doc. Marjorie watched it with me. She said, "I'll watch it I'll, if I don't like it. I'll, I'll, I'll go do something else." And she watched the whole thing. Right? You love it. Very good. Very good. Oh, I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah. Hey, actually, Alex, I got one more question for you. I meant to ask you today. I don't mean to. Uh, no, that's uh, okay. Speak I, too much. Gary, not, did you we, ever talk to Gary Mule Deer? I never interviewed with Gary Mule Deer. No. Okay. His documentary is also outstanding. He's coming on the Letterman podcast here fairly soon. So uh, I thought maybe you might have met him back in the day. No, Mule Deer was a very fine comic, by the way. In fact, if I remember correctly, he's famous for having, um, you see, Robin Williams was a joke thief. Plain and simple. And, um, I don't think it was anything nasty that he was doing. It's just that he he would hear something and then all of a sudden he would turn around and repeat it. I had a friend who was in a cab or in a car with him and uh, my friend said something to him, like a joke of one sort or another. And about two minutes later, Robin looked over at him and repeated the joke to him like it was his own. You know, that's the way he was. But anyway, so he would do that. Well, apparently he had stolen some material from Gary Mule Deer. And Mule Deer cornered him at the comedy store, grabbed him by his shirt, threw him up against the wall. Mule Deer is not a small guy. And you might ask him if this is a true story, but this is the legend. He threw him up against the wall and said, stop stealing my material and off to the side his wife was there with a checkbook writing a check out to him saying here how much do you want for the joke blah, 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 blah. and mule deer said i don't want money for the joke i want my joke back yeah he wants to be able to continually say it yeah, wherever yeah. he pleases yeah because what happened is if let's say you you had some material in your act and then Robin went on the Carson show and he did that joke. From then on, the Turns audience it. Say, oh, you stole that from Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Mule Deer was famous for having thrown him up against the wall. Now you can ask him if that story is true. I would like to know. Yeah. Uh, his legend. I'll ask him. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. But he his career didn't amount to a lot. You know? It did it's the, the eye of the beholder. Country channels. What do you mean, eye of the beholder? Uh, anybody here know who we're talking about? Sure. Absolutely. You do. Well, you do. Uh, he's yeah. in the Grand Ole Opry Hall of Fame and the and the and the, and different different places. Like he's niche. There's no question. But uh, he certainly certainly uh, made a mark in show business. Uh, Conan in the documentary. Conan's on there, and he talks about how many times creatives don't necessarily care about money. They just care about being able to be in front of an audience and make them laugh. And Mule Deer has done that for you know four four decades or more now five decades. Yeah, you know, what what I'm saying is that he never really achieved the kind of fame to begin with that I thought he deserved. He was very good, um, but he never became a name really. You know, he, he's big. If you're if you're a guy who watched Hee Haw, you'd love Gary Mule Deer. You know everything about him. That was his crowd. I yep. never knew he was, that he did the country circuit. That was his that was his big yeah. audience. You know, he was roommates with Steve Martin before Steve Martin was famous. Oh, I'm sure. And every time he's gone off into some sort of drunken stupor, gambled his money away, Steve Martin's always come in and sort of elevated him and, and helped him out. They're very close friends. Yeah. But, he gave Steve Martin his street cred on the uh, Smothers Brothers. Yeah. Uh, uh, Steve Martin was desperate for a joke one day. I called up Gary and said, can I please, please use this joke? Gary said, sure, it's yours. And then it became the opening line of uh, one of the Smothers Brothers uh, uh, programs. And then Steve got his feet under him. Like, it, it's a really, really good documentary. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Well, who? Well, what cha what uh, channel did that? I bought it. Uh, it's, it's. Uh, I forget what it's called. If you look up Gary Mule Deer on Apple TV, you'll see the option to to grab it. It's really good. 
Probably on Apple TV, Alan. I'm sure. What? It's probably on Apple TV. No, 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 it's not. It's not. But I, if I put in Gary Mule Deer, probably on YouTube, it would come up. The trailer will for sure. I don't know if the actual doc will, but uh, it's it's very very good. Yeah. Don't worry, people on YouTube don't mind stealing things. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it, it, YouTube is the most. And while he was still alive, I kept asking Shecky about this. I said, how do people keep doing this? I mean, YouTube just allows blatant stealing of material to be put up on on uh, YouTube. And they still do nothing about it. If you want to search it, Alex, it's called Show Business is My Life, But I Can't Prove It. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the documentary. Oh, look who's leaving work. Yeah, and taking yeah, us I've been with her, that. and taking us with her. How wonderful is that? <laughs> I wanted to put a camera up when she's leading her uh, fitness classes one day. I think that would be pretty fun. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Mar Marjorie is going to lead a fitness class, but it's only going to be one push up, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> She has, she has, I got to tell you, she, she has a, uh, uh oh, she, she works out once a week with a trainer. Wow. Well, well only the trainer, I mean, the trainer, but the theory, the theory behind it is my orthopedic surgeon felt that if you work and build up your muscles, you feel less pain. So I'm like on this trial thing with him mm -hmm. to do it. I still feel pain, but it's it, nice well, what it. happens is, it's Saturday morning, and I'm trying to sleep, and here I hear her in the other room going, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then for the rest of the day, she's complaining how every bone in her body aches. <laughs> and this is supposed to be good how? It's supposed to take over from pain. pain. It's supposed to stop the pain. I see. What does it do? It replaces it with a new pain? Is that what? Yeah, probably. I see. You know, I uh, I almost drove uh, Richard Simmons crazy <clears throat> uh, when I said to him uh, in an interview I was doing, I said, well, I never work out. And he said, why? I said, because I have a theory that if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. <laughs> And I had to, I think I had to put a stick in his mouth to keep him from swallowing his tongue. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, he worked out and look what he looked like. Yeah, well, you know, he was, a, he was inspirational to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Sweating to the oldies was uh, gigantic. Yeah. 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 And what it did. was all, I think people said it was not bad workout, you know, so. That the documentary is free on Amazon Prime, by the way. I just looked it up. On Amazon Prime? Yeah. Okay, I'll look it up. Yeah. What's, I, it, what's, what's it called again? Called Show Business is My Life, but I can't prove it. A film about Gary Mule Deer. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. We'll see. We'll it's watch very, it tonight, Marjorie. There's something we can watch together tonight. Mm hmm <laughs> You sound excited. <laughs> You'll actually find him funny, Marjorie. And now we're driving. With, oh yeah, with with uh, with Mandy. Who's <laughs> uh, that guy in her back seat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think she's leaving the parking lot. It's my theory. But she's mm -hmm. awfully fast for a parking lot. Yeah. She's outside the parking well, lot. Well, I'm passing it. Yeah, I. Had to park somewhere different because they're repaving and restriping our parking lots. And I was trying to find my way out. Yeah. I'm going up the way and I know what do. Yeah. Anyway. But, so, yeah. So anybody Today, else? Even though I am going to work out, I'm actually going to run. I'm running an errand for my mother. So uh, yeah. You're a good girl. <laughs> good daughter. Good daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'd be a good son, but my mother's dead. So, <laughs> I still haven't put a tombstone up. No. Alex, Alex. What? What do you mean? Who? Who said that? Who said that? You did. I can't believe you still haven't got a tombstone for your body. Well, you know, I've talked to a lot of people. I've mentioned this on occasion. 
that I've never gotten around to it because I don't live in California where she's buried, right? And um, uh, uh, the people have said to me, well, funny you should mention it. I haven't put one up for my mother yet either. <laughs> you know. Is it marked at all? Like, would you be able to find it? Uh, I don't even know which cemetery. Wow. That was going to put one on my mom's grave. It's kind of like we, we buried Fluffy She's out there. <laughs> we buried Fluffy out in the yard, but we can't remember where. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I didn't because uh, I never, I never, I, I wasn't ever back in California to do it. And then when I was, was I back in California? I, yeah, wait a minute. No, my mother died while I was in New York. And then I, and I was at uh, Sirius XM when she died. Yeah. So uh, I, I never was able to get back there beyond the funeral to get a tombstone. So uh, as soon as I get some money, which is coming in uh, soon, uh, I will. I probably will put a, a probably tear down my father's stone, and just move it over to my mother's grave, and then chisel out his name and chisel in hers. No. <laughs> magic uh, marker, do it. Alex, a magic marker, just do an afro. Well, yeah. What I used to say <laughs> is the joke was I was going to put up one tombstone, which I am going to do for the two of them, and then it would read. Uh, here lies Ruth and Alex Schwarzman, uh, parents of Alex Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you should say that again, buddy. I'm going to spend that much well, money for a tombstone. I want to get some publicity out of it. Parents of who? He'd go back to my father's grave, and I often thought he had a nice big stone. And it was just a small little stone. So I, I figured I'd like to put a up at least a nice one for the two of them. Uh, but uh, Eternal eternal Something is the name of the cemetery. My <laughs> business manager has the name of it. And it's going to be time for me to finally put a marker up there, I guess. You know. Um, but where am I going to be buried? They leave space for me. Oh. Well, are they actually buried or were they cremated? Because, you know, like my grandmother's cremated, but she still has like a headstone. Oh, somewhere. oh no, they were buried. They're compost. Yeah. yeah. No, they, they my were parents buried. are cremated. What? My parents were cremated. Your were parents they? were cremated? Yeah. Well, and, they sold their well, plots and, and in tell Pennsylvania. Them, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tell they decided them why. to get cremated in Florida. So we'll tell, <laughs> let, me, let me explain why I don't want anybody on this panel to allow Marjorie to cremate me. <laughs> and, and let me explain the reason why. What happened to your parents' actions? Come on. Oh, no. I don't remember. Come on. <laughs> they wound up where? My storage locker. <laughs> and what in my happened? storage locker and and what what happened when you when you let go of the storage locker you pretty much took everything out of it you needed and left everything back there so they would just have to get rid of it and what did you leave behind oh, oh, no. what did you leave behind marjorie a few things uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I left might, my parents. Might they be action nature? <laughs> oh, I, I saw them go for ten thousand dollars on storage wars. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those coupons from the penny saver for discounted prepaid cremations, but it was about to expire, so I had to get my parents cremated early. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> my uh, my wife, when her dad was cremated in. Uh, in Florida, she was living in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And one day she hears the doorbell ring and she goes and she gets this package and she turns around, she tells to the family, hey, dad's here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you knew that you made the right choice. I don't want to be cremated by Marjorie because I have no idea where my ashes will wind up. <laughs> Dwayne, our neighbor, used to work for the New York Compasser. He said that he'll help me spread out the ashes. Well, the whole uh, Mar uh, Shecky's uh -huh. good friend, Randy, 
got his ashes. Okay. Yeah. Go sprinkle it on 9th Street there near the old KITS building. What? <laughs> the old K KITS building was at 9th Street. Yeah. Um, it's we'll, we'll, we'll spread, we'll screw you, we'll, you know, put you there. Yeah. Since you were there for so many years. Well, Shaggy's, if I remember correctly, Randy did take some of the ashes down to a bar they all used to get together and meet. At McGee's? Nice. Like that, and just spread them outside. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Spread them on the bar. <laughs> She says she still has the rest of them. You know, <laughs> some reason his brother just dumped them off at her place. <laughs> you know? My brother just visited my stepmother recently and found out that my dad, who died in 2015, so eight years ago, is still in the the, the coat closet. She hasn't done anything. <laughs> but people, people get these he's like mad. And he's like, either so give it to one of us. Well, like, as I'd go spread it somewhere, I know it would be meaningful to him. Or something. Don't just leave them in the closet. Yeah. Well, like, well, I've thought about disrespectful. Well, yeah, I, I I'd like to maybe get a hold of Shecky's ashes, and uh, go uh, take that Antarctica tour that he took, <laughs> where he sm smelled penguin crap. Right. <laughs> so it was the worst smell he ever smelled in his life, <laughs> and just you know. D dump them there. Yeah, them there. I think he'd like to be with the penguins. He even has uh, to this day. If you go over to his Facebook page, there's still a picture of him with the penguins in the back. But you thought so, he was going to change it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad his Facebook page didn't get deactivated. They, they will deactivate them after a while with without any use at all. But it's like five years or something like that. Because how many dead people are on Facebook? Oh, I'm on Facebook, on Facebook. I'm on the six birthdays, six. people say happy birthday, miss you, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. How do they know? Do you have to? How, why do they deactivate some? Like there's some people that are on Facebook that just don't go on their page and do anything. So they're going to deactivate it. In five years. I, I think they have a policy now because you, because you, there is. You know, if you're not using it, then why should you? Why should they keep it? Right. In yeah. your settings, you can say who takes care of your site if you're dead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it really? Yeah. yeah it's, in the, it's in the daughter. settings. You can you can say in posterity <laughs> after you're gone. Yeah. Who who can control your your page and take it oh. over or delete it? Wow, I I have to go there. I don't know. You can have my page, Alex. Charlene, <laughs> do you want to take care of my page after I'm gone? Oh, you bet I will. I would, love to. <laughs> I would love to also if i am cremated will you hold on to my ashes rather than let marjorie have them <laughs> i would I, I would hold on to them close to my heart see see, see? i know i'd I'm make a big hole for you alex big old ash hole in the backyard a big ash hole in the yeah. backyard <laughs> <laughs> Well, people could say he was an ass show, ash hole in life, and now he's an ash hole in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, all, for all posterity. Well, you know, the latest thing is is really not to uh, not to bury you and not to cremate you. But make it mulch. Make it compost. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes about three months or something. They have this thing, they put you in it, and they put all this stuff over you, and then you become you become mulch. It breaks then, it down. And then you can be used in the backyard to, you know, plant flowers and things yeah. like that. Donate your body to science fiction. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it, 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 you, did you raise your hand there, Edward Berger? No, 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 no. Must be confusing me with somebody else. Well, I just <laughs> I just thought maybe you had something to say. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was that? No, 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 right, right, right. New character. <laughs> oh, we haven't heard from Don Geller. Yeah, he's not no, called. he hasn't messaged me back either. So oh. he's a one and done today, I guess. He's a one and done. Yeah. Because it's always fun when he calls, you know, the fun guy. He's actually doing something really sweet for me. We're coming up to uh, episode 100 of the Letterman podcast, and he is taking. He's taking it upon himself to go through all the episodes and pull out clips and stuff. And he's going to do a compilation, one of his compilations on the Letterman podcast, which I, I'm extremely humbled and honored about. And that's what episode 100 and maybe even 
101 uh, are going to be. And he's working on that while he's well, doing all his no other worry. He said he's too. also working on me on doing a, a compilation of me in the Monday show. I did it. I did a compilation for you, Mike, of all the times Letterman brought up your name on the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just just the once, I guess. Yeah. I, mean, no, I, guess I, I don't I don't know why you're so nice to him. He never mentions you. <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. But the uh we're, we're, the, the story's not over yet. Oh, okay. It has has not been written yet, right? Yeah, I think okay. so. I think well, it's he, he ain't getting crazy. any younger. You never know when you know. Did you guys see he's giving away the uh, marquee from the Ed Sullivan Theater? I yeah. entered the contest. Did you enter the contest? Yeah, That's yeah. excellent. If I excellent. win, I'll give the sign to you. Because I, I appreciate that. I okay. appreciate that. That's uh, fantastic. I've got a spot in my garage for it already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there were actually three marquees. So what about the one on the other side that looks just like it? I know one went to Ball State. So I'm not sure which one he's giving away. If this one is one that's in, been in a storage locker or if it's Ball State clearing out and he's giving that one away. Yeah, uh, I'm not certain yet. And then the front one, I have no idea what happened to the front one because that one there is this the, the one he's giving away is gigantic. I can't even imagine the one up front. The one up front is about... Uh, maybe two and a half times that size. I would more say. than that. Yeah, it's huge. The one up front, the one that he's giving away is eight feet tall by twenty feet long. I can't even imagine how uh, you know the other one. How big if you win one. it, what do you do with it? So yeah, I've already decided. There's a couple things I'm going to do now. Number Wait, one, I've you got haven't a... won it yet, and there are probably ten thousand people who sure. And plus, sure. It's, it's you. How much money did you offer? I only put up fifty bucks. I only, oh, so it's I'm, like six hundred votes. You haven't got a chance. No, and you're probably right. But no, at the I'll, end of the day, I'll, I'll put up a hundred, and I still I won't win. Sure, sure, but I have to be prepared just in case because you never know. Well, the money's going to Habitat for the Humanities. So that, yep, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So Giveawaydave.com if you want. I'll bet to, somebody you know. comes up with like fifty grand or something. Well, Kimmel probably. I'm sure Kimmel will. Someone told me though that you can't get more than five thousand entries. And 50 bucks got me 600 entries. So, um, and that sounds about right. I know that uh, they want to make sure that it's a bit of an even playing field for people because they had one that that wasn't an even playing field. And so they've kind of corrected the, they've corrected well, it. Minute, but weren't they going to give it away to the person who offered the most money? No, it's a raffle. That, that That's how they did the original. The first giveaway Dave thing was at one of their jackets. Mm-hmm. signed by Dave and and it was just an auction and once it got up to like $9,000 US they kind of stopped it and then every giveaway they've done since then has been a raffle um and even with this one here i believe that 5000 entries is the most 50 bucks got you 600 so that's what 500 600 what wait 50 entries bucks. entries into the raffle 50 bucks yeah. get you how many entries into the raffle for me it was 600 that doesn't make any sense Canadian money. Uh, yeah, you'll right. have to you'll yeah. have to take that up with the with the prize raffle company that's putting this on for Dave. It's uh, it's in poutine. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that's a lot of French fries. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Well, here comes Jeffrey. What did Jeffrey? Jeff. Oh, oh, he must have Jeff, been. Jeff, are you there? Damn. I don't know. He was on for a second and then he blacked out. He's coming back again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we usually we have to have Pamela there to do this for him. Otherwise, we spend forever trying to get him to turn down his audio. But uh, I don't see that Jeff is here. So I'm going to get rid of him because I don't you yeah. know, hung up because I, I don't trust it sometimes uh, because sometimes it's like somebody who wants to Zoom bomb me, you know, and they put up a name that I know. And then I automatically just go to it like Jeff Stein. And then it is, you know, it's some guy, you know, relieving himself. Uh, <laughs> That's gross. Not good programming. Yeah. <laughs> How's everything out in, out in your neck of the woods, Paula? Uh, okay. <laughs> we, 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 were just talking, huh? we were just talking about you yesterday. 
and saying, you're one of the few people who really come here and spend even a couple of weeks and we wouldn't mind it. You know? Wow. So no, nice. really, because you, you, you're such an easy guest to have. You know? Well, of course, I like being there. We uh, like you being here. And we love having oh, yeah. you. We'll, we'll figure that one out pretty soon. Well, don't take that for word, you know, gospel. <laughs> but uh, all of you are invited to stay here. How's that? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is not bad, you know. That's anyway. the nicest apartment I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. it, is pretty, it is pretty. Oh, sweet. yours. Yes. Yeah. It's wonderful. It is. We lucked sweet. out. Yeah, it was a it was a, a real mistake. OK, <laughs> had we known better, we would have never taken this apartment. Mm -hmm. But after we did, so many circumstances aligned themselves that we got it, you know, and for a price you won't believe, although we're still fighting that price. You know, it's but uh, but nevertheless, it's uh, you know, it, was, it turned out to be turned out to be pretty good. Now we're at the point where even if we don't even live here, we'll keep it. We're yeah. keeping it, absolutely. <laughs> they just don't make buildings like that anymore. It's yeah. an amazing building. It's built in 1900, place. and the walls are so thick. Yeah. I'll leave enough money to pay it off the rent for years, and then we can just have our ashes stored <laughs> on, the, on the mantle of the fireplace yeah. and and all we have to have is somebody come in every now and then and water the plants and that's it there you go don't even make sure they it. don't dust leave the computer on, so can run the See show. How, we, how we brought the topic all the way back <laughs> <laughs> all the way back to and Marjorie, I, poutine I, for dinner. Have, we have two people here today from <laughs> texas uh, Charlie's in Texas right now, and Scott Boddicker's in Texas. Well, and uh, sorry. you're still in the in. Where are you again? In you're in Plano, right? Yes. Yeah, Plano, Texas, which is the home of Snapple. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have you ever found the Snapple plan? I haven't looked for it, but you know, <laughs> you know, you know, it's there. <laughs> Because if you look at the bottle, you, you say so. I, I have to trust you. <laughs> if you. Look at the bottles. It says Plano, Texas. But it started in Brooklyn, Alex. <laughs> well, sometimes it's bottled. The company is in Plano, Texas. They were they were bought years ago. Who were they? It did start in Dr. Brooklyn. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. You, you know what happened? Um, I got to know. Remember that um, woman? Who was the woman who was there? There mascot you know oh, as well as they answered the phones remember her and was marjorie miller no <laughs> somebody the woman blah 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 from snapple and oh. uh, i uh, i interviewed her and uh, she taught me a lot of things about snapple you know what you should do with snapple when you get it when you get a bottle of it hit it on the bottom because there's silt from the juice that winds up on the bottom so if you then do that it mixes with the rest of it and gets well you can also shake the bottle alex come on she showed me what to do this was <laughs> a, about wendy kaufman right wendy wendy That's from it. apple and she did the ads for years you know um what, what you have to look it up yeah absolutely oh okay I'm like, your backup buddy. I'm a good wingman. Yeah, I know, for I know you. you're here for me. I, I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure if uh, if uh, Charlene uh, isn't here fast enough to get my ashes, you'll take them then, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, you're gonna love Canada. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the problem is you can only bury me on Thanksgiving. <laughs> When is your, the once again, just so that we're ready to celebrate it next year when is your thanksgiving uh it's usually like the second monday of october does any of that make sense folks early harvest man early yeah harvest. what are we the third thursday in, the, in november yeah fourth. yeah 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 fourth. yeah third the third third fourth the fourth. Only fourth thursday in thanksgiving in november fourth, the fourth <laughs> thursday <laughs> The fourth Thursday. 
<laughs> what, are you, what are you doing, Marjorie? I'm it's looking at the calendar. Yes. It, it is the fourth. The fourth. It is the fourth. I forgot, I forgot we had the the three little days at the beginning of the month. Yeah. There. Yeah, second, the ninth, the sixteenth, and the twenty-third. It's the fourth. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> oh well, we end the show with an argument. <laughs> Bunch of turkeys. Hey, listen. This is, this is, <laughs> As usual, this is fun. This is, you know, I love doing this one. I I never get tired of it. Uh, and it's because of a bunch of nice people. And uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, uh, first of all, thanks to Andrew Deutsch for joining us today. Uh, thanks to Mike Chisholm up there in Canada. Feel sorry for him. Uh, <laughs> and, and, well, he wishes he lived in New York. Okay. Yeah, so I could get the Albert Brooks documentary four days early. Yeah, that's right. Ed, uh, let's see here. Uh, I get to you in a second, Edward. Kelly Wallace, thank you very much. Len LaFrisco, Mandy O'Brien down there in Georgia. Okay, we're looking forward to your trial down there. We're having ours now, and then they move the whole Trump package down there. And... <laughs> Todd Boddicker, thank you very much. Um, Paul Levin, she's really one of our best friends, and we I appreciate you calling us every week. Marjorie Miller, yeah, not so much. Uh, <laughs> and finally, uh, Charlene Solis, thank you. And once again, to sign us off, here is the lovely and attractive Edward Berger to say, That's all, folks. <laughs> okay, oh. bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Love, everyone. Thank you.